morning everybody my name is Eric and I am brand new to the world of RV transport how new I have done three short loads and this is my first long load heading across the country uh, started just a little while ago got a lot of great information off of YouTube from channels like Mr. Tennessee Sea Farmer Holland Paws High Mileage Helper Everybody has a lot of great information out there. Uh, recently retired from my previous job. My wonderful wife said, yeah, you can go ahead and retire, but you're not gonna sit around the house ordering Amazon all day long while I go to work. So she didn't care if I worked a couple days a week in a hardware store or something, but I was gonna work. About a year ago, I saw some videos on RV transport, and uh, like a lot of people, kind of put a light bulb on because I had no idea how these campers were moved around the country. Most of them are built in the Elkhart, Indiana area, and then shipped out to dealers all across the country. So I thought that would be a good retirement job. I was planning on retiring in about four years. And things got interesting at work. Decided, man, maybe I'll retire a little bit early. Started watching some videos. One of the first ones I saw, luckily, was uh, from Mr. Tennessee on what you needed to get started in RV transport. So I watched that a few times. That led down the rabbit hole of his videos and the other channels. I got a notebook out, started writing things down. My wonderful wife came home that day. I said, well, what do you think about this? And we watched the video and looked at a couple other things. She's one of those spreadsheet geeks, CPA, finance, numbers person. And she said, yeah, we can make this work. We already had a three-quarter ton diesel truck that we bought about a year and a half ago with the idea of getting a camper ourselves. And then just life, life happened and we couldn't do it. We didn't do it. Um, so had the main investment. Started making lists of what I would need based on all the other channels. Started exchanging some emails with Mr. Tennessee and he was amazing. Prompt replies helpful information. He gave me his phone number. We called, chatted a couple times, uh, answered any questions that I had. So put in some applications, got an email from one back, started the process, and uh, here we are now. So I'm actually on that, this first long trip with Mr. Tennessee, and he suggested I start doing some videos on the RV transport world from the perspective of a newbie. So here I am, which is putting me out of my comfort zone because I don't like having my picture taken. I don't like the sound of my voice and I try to avoid being in videos whenever possible. But we're gonna give it a shot and see what works. I'll probably be a little disjointed at first. If the audio is bad, I apologize. I'm gonna pick up a microphone, hopefully make that a little bit better. Um, but I figure do some videos on how I got into it, the process, what equipment I purchased, purchases that were good, purchases that maybe not so good and I'm going to change out um, and just how I got into it and what it's been like so far. I said it's my fourth trip. I'm really enjoying it. This trip had some challenges. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But I'm still, still smiling, laughing, having a good time. We've seen some beautiful country, had some interesting weather having fun doing it. All right, I'm back. It's been a day or two since that first little blurb. I'm on the home stretch coming back from Elkhart heading home. Figured I'd give you a little rundown of the three trips I did this outing. Um, the breakdown on how Utah, Reno and all that paid how it all went. So for this first outing, I went out, did a short one to Ohio, uh, about 250 miles, other than taking about almost an hour to find the camper in the mud pit. That one went real smooth, no issues. Uh, was talking with Mr. Tennessee about doing a long one, checking out the weather, everything through Wyoming, Utah, and Nebraska all looked good, so we found two units going to the same dealer in Reno, Nevada. Um, 
called in to book that. They asked if I could do another short one beforehand, which I was already planning on doing. So I took another one to Ohio for them. Uh, that one went smooth, except for frozen trailer hitch. Note to self, bring something to eat the hitch. Got that delivered, met up with Mr. Tennessee, went to our yards, picked up trailers, met at a truck stop, started heading out. Everything looked great until we got into Iowa. Then the weather started looking like it was turn, taking a turn for the worst. Um, heading in through Utah, Wyoming, into Nebraska. So we kept going. We wound up stopping a day early, or early in the day, in Wyoming. We had high gusts, a lot of rain. Just didn't feel comfortable going, so pulled over and stopped for the the day after just a couple hundred miles got up the next morning the weather still was looking pretty iffy started heading out another couple hundred miles the signs started popping up interstate 80 closed another short day pulled off it's been a long day again got up started heading out everything was weather weather was clear no other weather issues on the way out to reno did have a couple mechanical issues going up a slight incline I heard a thunk my engine light came on and I couldn't get power to go above 50 55 miles an hour the turbo wouldn't go above 7 psi so luckily we were a mile from a truck stop we pulled in Mr. Tennessee has an awesome hotel scanner hook that up to the port everything comes back transmission related either the solenoid switch or dirty or low transmission fluid so we started with the easy stuff pull the stick sure enough it's low get that added in fire up the truck everything looks good lights off got throttle response turbo boost pressure is looking good only lost half hour 45 minutes on that one later on in the trip he calls says my tires going low pull off another truck stop, look at it, can't find anything wrong with it, so we're going to swap out the spare tire. Get that swapped. He's hauling a fifth wheel, can't put it in his bed, so that's in the back of my truck. Definitely two things that uh, went easier having two people with the right equipment. Um, well, I would definitely recommend, especially starting out, if you can find somebody to do some runs with, team up, work on the buddy system, help each other out. I don't know how long I would have sat there if I could limp it to a new Dodge dealership close by. But they weren't going to open up till Monday. It was the weekend, so that's on the on the Christmas wish list. We'll, we'll see what Santa brings for me this year. That scanner. Um, my jack wound up working better. Get his truck up for the spare tire. So everything worked out. Got to Reno about. 11 30 in the morning talking to another driver said that he got there at eight o'clock and he was number 10 in line so we were about 14 or 15 and they were running around like crazy but everything went smooth on that great people out there she had a couple drivers giving her grief about how long the wait was we just said whenever you can get to us we'll be here uh, i think she actually pushed back her lunch break to get us checked in before she went to lunch we appreciate it. Had some jokes. Just pays to be nice to people. You don't know what they're going through. After there, we went to a tire shop. Tried to get his tire swapped over. Uh, patched, repaired, whatever. Put back on the truck. <laughs> they put it in the dunk tank. And his rim is cracked. So he'll be staying on the spare tire the rest of the time. Uh, he's been dealing with his, where he bought him from. Un supposed to be still under warranty. So he had some phone calls and texts going back and forth with them. I know he's going to put that in a video and tell you all about it. Um, run back started off smooth. Then we start getting alerts that another front's moving through and they, they're shutting down parts of Wyoming again. So we pull off in Park City, Utah, about 1 o'clock. No truck stops nearby, so we go to Walmart parking lot. Um, get some groceries. Don't know how long the trip back is going to take. Figured my, we're here, might as well go see a movie. Nothing else to do. Saw so a movie came out. 
start looking at the weather and they're starting to open up Wyoming from west to east again. So we load it up, figure we'll get as far as we can until we catch up to the weather and stop. We never caught up to the bad stuff again. Um, straight shots, everything was great going back through. It was awesome getting back up to 23 miles a gallon again uh, after, after the trip out. Got back to Elkhart. I made an appointment for Saturday to talk to them. I'm going to swap out some of the equipment that I initially bought. Uh, I'll do something later on about my original thought process, how it worked out, and what I'm going to switch, what I'm going to switch to. Uh, so I didn't book a load heading back home because I didn't know how long I was going to be there, and if you don't book it by the end of the day on Friday, you can't get the paperwork till Monday anyway. He booked a load heading back to the house, so he's pulling that. We ran into high winds, and higher winds, and snow, and Elkhart, northern Indiana. So I've actually moved ahead. I'm scouting the weather ahead. As you can see, it looks really nice coming into Kentucky. But if it, if it goes bad, I'll let him know. And if he needs something, I'll turn around and go help him out. But the Reno trip was a real fun trip, despite all the, the interesting possible setbacks that we had. Um, I wound up getting paid $3,500.03 for the load, uh, which was real nice, except that I had to spend $1,300, just over $1,300, seemed that the prices were going up by the hour. They'd go up overnight 80, 80 cents to a dollar a gallon in some places. Uh, that's where having that auxiliary fuel tank is going to help out. You can plan out those fuel stops, look ahead, find the cheapest stuff where you want to stop. One of the things I'm going to swap out is I'm going to go from a 50 to a 91 gallon tank. So I had a couple times where I had to do a splash and go, put in five or ten gallons just to get me to that next good fuel stop. So with that, I should be able to cover what I need to and uh, get the cheapest fuel, and that'll pay for itself within a, within a couple of months. So, you know, you get, being new, they can take they take 10% of your first loads out until you get to a $1,500 bond, bond, just in case there's any incidents down the road. So that got taken out pull-out fee. Looks like it raised a little bit to $45 from $40. Um, but after all of that, uh, I'll get reimbursed for my tolls and that. They deposited $3,500 and three cents onto my card. So not bad. Uh, and I made a, a few hundred dollars for each of the short runs. Uh, I was looking at this more of a, a learning experience. And again, I would highly suggest teaming up with somebody on the first runs, talk you through everything. Well, we sat on the phone talking while we were driving. Sometimes we'd have four different drivers linked into the phone call, everybody talking, telling where they were, what the weather was like. So, great assets. Everybody I've run into as a driver has been more than helpful. Uh, the first couple ones I had some questions in, in the yard because things don't really get labeled all that well. Two of my trailers said that they were in the same row and they were over a mile apart, completely different sections. So um, people, you can stop people in the yard. They'll stop, help you out, talk to you. Everybody's been real, real friendly, real easy, to, real easy to work with. So despite the little mechanical issues and that, great week, week and a half of transporting. Everything went really well. Looking forward to doing it again. Uh, I've got some stuff I've got to take care of at home this week. We're gonna take a little little vacation. We're gonna run this truck back up to Elkhart. Wonderful wife's gonna come up in her car. I'm gonna leave this there at Dan's for the week so he can do the upgrades. And we're gonna take a trip, go see her brother and family. Watch out vehicle on shoulder ahead. Over two years due to COVID. I've got a flag I made for him um, over two years ago and just haven't been able to get it to him. So 
get that done, come back, pick up the truck in Elkhart, try to take a, another kind of short load to Western Kentucky where I have an appointment there and uh, start kicking off from there again. But if anybody has any questions, I'll try to answer them from a newbie pers perspective, leave any comments you got. I'm um, gonna have some stuff coming out, uh, like I said, about the equipment I originally bought, what I'm changing to, what worked, what didn't work as well, some things that I bought along the way on this trip to help things go a little bit smoother, make it easier, um, and probably also start doing some on being a type 2 diabetic, doing this job and trying to eat as healthy as you can on the road to keep the sugar down. Um, I did okay on this one, but being the first one, I strayed a bit. I have to admit, I did have a bag of those chocolate candies with the heart candy coating and peanuts in the middle that I munched on a few times. But I'm going to work on being better about it in the future. And once it warms up, be able to do some walking around the truck stops and that. So hopefully this will be a little helpful. Like I said, I'm, I'm brand new to all of this, both videos and transporting. So bear with me if they're choppy and a little unprofessional to start with. Hopefully things will, will get better as we go along and I can share any tips that I've picked up from people or just what I found on my own. And, uh, I hope to see you probably in about a week or so. Thanks.